Hello everybody and welcome to Taste Test, the show where we try limited edition chocolate products and ask two very important questions. Number one, are they an improvement on the original? And number two, where do they fall on the patented Taste Test ranking chart, also known as the Tasteometer? Today we have three intriguing propositions on the table and in the interest of absolute impartiality, we will be going through them in alphabetical order, starting with Aero Chocolate Caramel moving on to chocolate brownie hobnobs, and last but certainly not least, Toblerone Orange Twist. We're doing crucial work here and I really see no reason to delay further, so begin, begin the, first the first taste, taste test. test. So by doing Aero Chocolate Caramel first, not only are we going in alphabetical order, but let's face it, we're also getting the least interesting one out of the way. Now here I have a four pack. This is also available as a large bar, a sharing block you might say, although nobody shares them. Not much to say about this packaging really. I think they've gone for a luxury feel with the gold foil, but let's be honest, I don't think Aero is a premium chocolate brand and I would go as far as to say it's nobody's first choice. Have you ever met someone whose favorite chocolate bar is Aero? Because I haven't and I don't believe those people exist. But maybe caramel is the element that will elevate Aero up to the higher ranks of the chocolate kingdom. But I am slightly skeptical because of course there is not actual caramel in this chocolate bar, it is merely caramel flavoured. Seems like quite a cheap shortcut to me, but let's withhold judgement. Okay, so what I will say is that there is an absolute pong of caramel coming out of this packet. <laughs> as soon as I ripped it open, it just hits you like a ton of bricks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I've said expectations were low and maybe that's actually worked in its favour. I have to say I like it and uh, the reason is I think that the caramel flavour definitely adds something a bit unique to it. I mean, let's face it, a standard Aero is essentially just a middling quality chocolate bar and the aerated nature of it means that it doesn't really pack much of a punch. Adding the caramel element into the mix this is kind of like if a Caramac and an Aero had a baby. It would be this little caramel infused little boy. So with that in mind, when we ask the question, is Aero chocolate caramel an improvement on the original Aero? Well, I'm inclined to say yes, but that is quite a low bar to clear at the end of the day, I mean. Now we're getting to specifics about scoring and chart placement towards the end of the episode, but what I will say is that we are off to a strong start. Let's move on. So next up we have McVitie's Hobnobs chocolate brownie flavour. Now, these guys, I feel, have got a real legacy to live up to. Hobnobs have legendary status, and rightfully so. They are a gift. A gift from the, uh, the heavens above. But, <laughs> so we really find ourselves now in the exact opposite situation as our first taste test. The Aero had such a low bar to cross, but the McVitie's Hobnobs well, their bar is, you know, somewhere in the outer atmosphere. Are you really trying to tell me that these hobnobs are going to be better than normal hobnobs. I don't think I'd believe you, but we'll give it a try. In terms of packaging, it's your standard sort of McVitie's affair, you know. They've definitely got a style and they don't really push too far out of it. It's fine, you know, it is what it is. Alright, well let's see if this one has a bit of a bouquet, um, as the Caramel Aero certainly did. Look, there's a strong chocolate smell. I think it's probably a stronger chocolate smell than you would get with your standard hobnobs, but let's see if that's reflected in the taste. Look, I see what they're trying to do, and I think it's admirable. The hobnob itself, it's the same oaty biscuit that we all know and love. The brownie flavour is isolated entirely to the chocolate coating. Now, I know what you're thinking, David. It's such a thin coating. How can it possibly leave a big impression? Well, the answer is it doesn't really. I think the, the first mouthful, I got a bit of that kind of artificial brownie flavouring, but the more I went into the biscuit, the more it just kind of faded into a generic chocolatey taste. Overall, it's ambitious. I respect the hustle. The McVitie's company are doing God's work and I'd happily march into battle for them. But I can't in good conscience say that the chocolate brownie hobnobs are an improvement on the original. It would be a barefaced and outrageous lie. Again, we'll talk about final scores towards the end, but I have to say I worry about how this one is going to do on the mean streets of the tasteometer. It's tough out there. Which brings us to the final test. <sighs> and I have to say, impartiality be damned, I'm probably most excited about this one. Toblerone Orange Twist. 
The potential here is limitless, astounding. I mean, what can I say about this packaging? It's so timeless, it's so beautiful. The triangle shape is iconic. Of course, we all remember when they tried to change the shape. It was a dark chapter in human history. I'm glad they went back on that. It's a nice design, and I think this has potential to be a very good Toblerone. But of course, there is one major concern, and that is because the special flavor is described as gingery, candied orange peel. Now that's got to be one of the worst things I could have possibly read today. I am not a very big fan of ginger. I'm fearful for what this could mean for the bar. If I'm getting a strong gingery taste, well, the dream might be dead. Oh. <laughs> I think I just had one tenth of an orgasm. It smells good, guys. It smells good. It's got that Terry's chocolate orange style chocolatey orange smell. <laughs> what does that even mean? Bonjour. Well, let me start off by saying that it's Toblerone, so of course it's quite good. Let's address the ginger elephant in the room. Uh, there was a small hint of ginger in a couple of the mouthfuls I took, but it was sporadic and it was not so strong that I consider it um, a huge detriment, so I'm willing to let that slide. I think my bigger issue is that the orange flavour just never really hits unless it's Terry's. You know what I mean? Like a Terry's chocolate orange is so fucking good. And whenever any other chocolate company tries to do an orange chocolate bar, it just always falls short. And even the mighty Toblerone cannot live up to Terry's legacy, and I just find that remarkable and astonishing. It is perfectly nice, it's perfectly eatable, but if you're asking me whether it's better than the original Toblerone, well, of course not, and to suggest otherwise would be utterly ludicrous. Which brings us to perhaps the most exciting part of the programme, the Tastometer ranking. ranking. Now this is a great opportunity to reflect on what we've learned today, and of course decide where these fuckers are gonna go. Now we started the programme with the Aero chocolate caramel. That was a really lovely time and I think we all look back on it as just a wonderful part of the video and a wonderful part of our lives. Now maybe this is because I haven't left the house in four days or maybe it's because there are more than 15 grams of sugar in each small bar of Aero chocolate caramel. But I feel a real affinity with this bar. I liked it and it is today's winner. It will be going moderately high on the tasteometer. And now we move on to the second taste of the program and you know the feeling when a trusted and beloved friend or family member lets you down. That's kind of how I felt while trying the chocolate brownie hobnobs. Look, I love hobnobs. Everybody likes hobnob. <laughs> but I cannot hide the fact that I was disappointed by this limited edition. I guess you could say it was the worst of both worlds. It was not a satisfying chocolate brownie experience, but nor was it an entirely satisfying hobnob experience. And for that reason, I'm afraid I have no choice but to rank it bottom of today's tests. And it's going quite low down on the tasteometer, as you can see here. It hurt me to do that. But McVitie's need not feel too sorrowful, for another titan of the chocolate arena frankly embarrassed themselves today. Of course I'm talking about Toblerone Orange Twist. If you try to step up to Terry, it's likely you're going to get burned, and that was certainly the case here. Now, in all good conscience, I can only put Toblerone Orange Twist just very slightly above the chocolate brownie hobnobs. I don't think there was much separating them. They both let me down. In fear that the tasteometer was perhaps a little bit too vague, I have now added a measurement that will come to define everything that graces this chunk of cardboard. Let me introduce you to the new tasteometer, where as you can see, things will be ranked in accordance to whether they are yum or bum. And on that bombshell, I think it's about time we all go and do something else. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time for another Taste Dads. Mmm. Mmm. Fuck, that's good. <laughs> that is so good. But McVitie's need not feel too sorrowful for another titan of the chocolate arena. <laughs>